It's probably worse than running it with fans attached, but as an AIO without any fans directly mounted, at least an okay solution, that's what we're gonna try today. Welcome to Machines and More. So this Geek G1SE we've been looking at here on the channel has support for a 120 millimeter AIO, but it won't support a full 240. And I think this one is a little bit of a missed opportunity here since if things were shifted downwards, there should be enough space at the top for your typical 240 plus fans. But I've always been curious about this one and this seems like the perfect scenario to test it. This case is sealed off pretty tight without much ventilation other than the side panels and the top and bottom. So I'll switch over to use the solid panels on the side and that will force the rad to be the primary location for air to enter or exit at the top. So what I'm gonna do is partially disassemble this build. We'll take a few things off, wrangle the AIO into here, and then we'll just use the case fans at the bottom to help pull air through the rad for heat exchange. And let's just compare things against the low profile cooler here, as well as the same AIO set up with the fans on it. And also, I'd like to see the impact on the GPU cooling as well. All right, the install is complete. The 240 I'm using here is the Cooler Master ML240 Illusion, an excellent unit previously reviewed here on the channel. And before we get into the performance, just a few notes here on how this was all done. I did have to take the aluminum shell off and the top fan tray off to make it easy to install the rad. The rad then does need a few 632 countersunk screws, which I had on hand, but you might need to source those. But due to the layout at the top, you can only fit four screws into one 120 millimeter fan hole pattern, which is good enough to hold down the rad. Now I also had to lower the power supply so as to not interfere with the tubing coming out of the rad over on this end. So if I were going for a more permanent setup, I'd drill holes to mount it, but I just did temporarily secure the PSU cage against this panel over here. And these aren't the ideal fans for this type of setup, but just for a proof of concept build, I left the Noctua S12As in place. I did stick a fan grill over the PSU side fan when I mounted it as exhaust to begin with. Uh, these are actually very good fans, which is not static pressure optimized, but it will give a good enough idea of whether this setup will work or not. So does it work? Pretty well, actually. I did a baseline run with the RAD in open air and with this Ryzen 5 2600 at a locked core voltage of 1.3 volts and at a slight OC of 4.0 gigahertz on all cores, the CPU topped out at 54 degrees or so with fans at 1100 RPM for Blender. One would typically expect higher temps with a normal AIO setup mounted in a case simply because fans won't move air as effectively through a case plus the ambient warm air in the case will warm up the coolant a little bit more. And with the initial fanless setup with two case fans only, exhausting at the bottom at the same 1100 RPM, the CPU tops out at about 10 degrees higher here, which really isn't bad at all. And these are pretty reasonable CPU temps here for this chip. Now, one question you might have is, should the case fans be run as exhaust or intake? So I did set this up as an exhaust first, that was likely to yield the best CPU thermal since that means the intake air source is the rad, which would give the outside air directly to the rad first. And then if you flip the fans to intake, you will see the temps go up a little bit with the repeated Cinebench run, which this case was initially tested with the IS60 air cooler. It's still not bad though, 73 degrees or so. And compared to the air cooler with vented panels and four case fans, it's still better. Now keep in mind that with the air cooler and solid panels, the cooler was completely choked off and the CPU got way hot to run anything at all. But the primary reason you would want to run the bottom fans as an intake would be for better combined thermals during something like gaming. So for Red Dead 2, the GPU temps aren't sustainable for the exhaust option, and this is due to the card taking in the RAD's exhaust, and also the negative pressure system means that the card isn't exhausting as efficiently. 
the CPU temps are a little bit too good here for the game running at 60 FPS or so. So it definitely makes some sense to rebalance things and just run the positive pressure option, which gives the fresh air to the GPU first, helps it exhaust, and there's enough headroom for the 240 AIO still to ensure very good thermals. And this is a quite competitive option if you want to use the solid panels. Now with the GPU only running Unigen Heaven 4.0, this gives a pretty clear picture to why you want to run the intake option more so than the exhaust option. And for folks that might see a combined use scenario such as in gaming, unless you want to dial up those GPU fans to a very, very audible level, I think the intake option is better. So some of you actually might wonder what it takes to get this to work and maybe you don't have a case just like this one. So I'll explain why this works and then you can evaluate whether or not it would work for your particular case. So whether you move air through the radiator with fans attached to it directly or semi-passively with fans at the other end doesn't matter in an ideal case. If everything is sealed off, that air coming in has to go out here. Of course, in the real world, there will be some losses where some air will escape through an easier path. Now looking at this case, it's sealed off very well other than the holes at the bottom that are cut out for the fans 120 millimeter circles there's no other ventilation at the bottom and at the top it's practically covered by the 240 rads surface area now at the back there's just a little hole above the card and you could tape that off for even better performance and just a tiny hole for the Kensington lock and that's it. So the main point of loss, assuming you're using the solid panels is just through the graphics card, but that's a necessary concession unless you have something like the RDNA2 reference cards from AMD, which are closed off completely at the back. And a card like that would be ideal for this type of setup. You do absolutely have to use the solid panels though, since if you introduce an easier path, the air is just going to move through the vented panel instead, and very little air is going to pass through the rad. As an example, I swapped out a vented panel for the GPU side solid panel, and what you're seeing is just the coolant heating up progressively without much heat exchange happening except for what's passively occurring, and this is completely unsustainable for the CPU. So if you wanna try this with your case, you absolutely, need a tempered glass or acrylic side or some kind of solid panel and you will actually have to make sure that everything is sealed off except for the rad and the fans. And this can actually be quite challenging with some well ventilated cases like the Cooler Master NR200 or NKSM1. But this Geek G1 SE and a lot of sandwich style layouts are the ideal cases to try this with. So pros for the setup, this is one way you can use the acrylic panels while still getting acceptable thermals. It allows you to use a bigger rad in a case that's otherwise not set up for it. And the graphics card does work quite well compared to the solid panel and air cooler setup. It's cheap, you only need two case fans for the build and those could simply be the fans from your AIO directly as well. So you don't need to get any extra fans. Though if I were to run this setup longer term instead of just a proof of concept test build, I would definitely pick fans that are static pressure optimized and quieter at high RPMs. So something like the Noctua NFA 12 by 25 or the Arctic P12s would be at the top of my list. The cons, well, your entire case is now dependent on just two fans. So your GPU and your board cooling is entirely dependent on how fast those two fans are running. Perhaps your CPU might not be needing those high fan speeds, but you will still need to make sure to maintain a high minimum RPM just so everything is stable. So I think a minimum here could be a thousand RPM and you could then dial the fan curves to ramp up as needed beyond that point. Now the 2600 is a relatively cool chip by current AMD Zen 3 standards. And I think you could get away with anything around 65 TDP at, at, and at these fan speeds. 5600X would be fine, the 3600X. Anything higher will run louder, of course, you'll need higher fan speeds. You're just as limited though with the vented panels and the low profile air cooler originally built up with this case. And you will actually have to do a little work with this PSU mounting just to make enough clearance for the tubing. But other than that, it's actually quite a neat setup that is quite unique as well. And I think it's a lot of fun. So glad to have you along for the test. I will leave the components linked down below for reference. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and thanks for watching today.